Cross-referencing is basically something that's saying, look, I'm going to go ahead and reference this to another story, another article, another table, or even a picture. For example, if you ever read a newspaper or any web pages, have you ever got to the bottom of the article and it says, please, to continue, click on this link, or please see page 5? We can do both of those in Microsoft Word. You can actually not only reference and say, um, see this figure, or go ahead and see this table, or even go to another page, but you can actually link it so when people click on it, it takes them right to that picture, or it takes them right to that page 20, where it continues with that article. And to give you an idea of some of the things you can cross-reference link to, would be any headings that you have within your document, bookmarks or figures, captions as we just went over in the previous training video. So make sure you have those set up. If you haven't inserted any bookmarks within your document, it's not going to work. If you don't have any headings within your document, and I'm not talking about headings that you create, for example, does this look like a heading to you? Well, it's not to Microsoft Word because it's not using the built-in heading templates. See, if I go ahead and select this, the built-in template, when I click on it, says that that's now, according to Microsoft, a real heading because I'm using their styles and not my own. So if I hit undo and I start using my style saying, well, let's see, you're going to be um, Cambry and you're going to be size 16, well, that's a heading. Well, if you look in your styles, if you don't have any styles selected by Microsoft, then it's not going to see as a heading and you can't cross-reference to it. Simple as that. And you want to be able to watch the training video on styles to see how that operates here. But I'm going to go ahead and undo this. And then finally, is the other thing is, is if you don't have captions, text under underneath your pictures uh, but using Microsoft's default captions, again, watching that training video. So I've got all three. I've got a heading level 2 within my document, I have a bookmark, and I have a figure to show you how you can do it, at least those three, there are more. So if I want to create a cross-reference, like for example, see somewhere within my document, I want to say here, maybe I want to reference Phil Collins' lyrics. I have a bookmark, in fact, if you come up here, click on Insert, and go to Bookmarks here, I have bookmarks on lyrics, so I can do create a cross-reference. So I could do open parentheses and say, please see Phil's, okay, and it's not capitalized, that's okay. And I want to do a cross-reference, well, I can come on the Insert tab, and there's my cross-reference right here, or I can go to References, and there's also my cross-reference, so there's more than one place to do this. In any case, I go ahead and click on Cross-Reference, and what reference uh, type do I want to uh, refer to? When I click on the drop-down arrow, we talked about headings, I got that in my document. A bookmarks, also when I scroll down, do I have any figures or captions? Well, first of all, I want to do my bookmark, okay? So that's the reference type. I'm going to be referencing a bookmark that's already within my document. Now, how do I want to be able to cross-reference it to? So when I insert the reference, do I just want to do uh, the book text? And you can see the, there's my bookmark down below, lyrics. Do I want the text, just lyrics? Uh, it'll type in lyrics here. That's fine. It, but when I click on it, it'll actually link me and pull me right to that bookmark. Or I can change this and say, how about if I just insert a page number, you know, like you see in newspapers where it says, please see page 5. If I insert a page number here, referencing this bookmark, it'll say, please see Phil Collins' lyrics, and then I'll click on the number, and it'll have a number there. So I click on it, there it is too. Click Close, and then I can close that. And then you can see, when I click and drag, you see how it shades that just a little bit extra? Because that can be updated too. So for example, this is now going to page 2, and I can actually see lyrics, I can even type before it, PG2. So if I move his lyrics, or that bookmark that's on page 2, if I move it around and I put it on page 3, or I, or I come in here and I actually inadvertently keep typing, you see how it keeps shifting it down? It's going to shift that bookmark down far enough that it could actually go on to page 5 or 6. In fact, I'll just go ahead and hit Control enter a couple of times to knock some pages down. So I have, instead of six pages, eight pages. And I'll scroll back up, okay, right to my cross-reference. And if I right-click it, I can go ahead and update the field, and it automatically updates it to page four because the, I pushed the bookmark down a couple of pages. Now, if you've got a lot of cross-referencing going on, like this one's to a bookmark. Let's see, I do another one to a header saying, hey, look, if you want to read more about uh, what is Phil about, um, I could reference the header. So when people click on that, it goes right to the heading, what, what is Phil about. Um, in any case, if you get a lot of cross-references going on, a, a lot of captions, you can do Control-A, okay? In fact, I'm going to undo this here. And I'm going to hit Control-A to select all the cross-references within my document. Any captions, this will also work. In fact, it'll also work on your table of contents, because your table of contents, if you want to watch the training video on that, is looking at all the pages and all the headings throughout your document. And you can update all these dynamic codes for page numbers in here if they've been offset and moved to another page. Again, just hit Control-A, then hit F9 on your keyboard, and it automatically updates everything within your document, okay? I'm going to hit Undo a couple of times. 
because I don't want to insert all those page breaks and you know get it to look a little bit clean again. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show you is once you insert that cross reference, not only if I print this out, do I you know start reading it and going, oh okay, it's on page two, and I scroll down to page two, you know, and then there's the lyrics right here, or if I sent this or emailed this to somebody, they could actually hover over this and hold down the control key and it changes from an eye beam to a little hand that when I click, boom, it takes me right to that bookmark. Of course, I can't see the bookmark because I don't have the bookmark turned on. And you can watch a training video on bookmarks, but it takes me, it cross-references it in two ways. It tells me and then it, secondly, it links to it. So let's do another one. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Actually, I know I've got a caption here. How about if we reference that caption? And that looks like it's on page four. So let's scroll all the way back up to page three here. And we just say um, it's something about CD sales. We could say, please see. And then I have the choice of inserting a cross reference. We'll go to the captions group within the reference tab, or we can go to the insert tab and insert a cross reference. And we don't want to reference a bookmark, we want to reference our figure. And then, depending on how many captions I've inserted within the document, it'll be figure one, two, three, four, and five. Of course, this one's just figure one. CD sales are up 2001. I can insert the entire caption, click on insert, and click close, and then close my parentheses. Of course, it's referencing uh, the caption and actually fitting the format of the caption, which is in this type of form font. And you see, I can go ahead and make it all the same, and then come up here and say, look, you'll all be size 10, and hit enter, so it fits in snugly. So I can say, please see figure one, CD sales are up in 2001. Well, you know what? I can either do it that way, but where's figure one? I like it when it says on page 2 or page 5, but if it's Microsoft Word, I can just control click and it takes me right to it. So let's go ahead and undo that. And we can uh, select this and delete it. And let's try another insert cross reference here. Instead of the entire caption, how about if we just do page number and then click insert? And then we just type it in here. Um, please see fig1 on PG. For. Anyways, you get the idea. I can go ahead and close out of here, and when I hover over it, you can see it's a dynamic code there. It'll update it. If the figure is no longer on page 4, if I type in more text up above here, um, and I keep going, hitting enter and adding more text, eventually it's going to bump this from page 4 to page 5, and I just showed you how to go ahead and update this. And the quickest way is, of course, right-clicking on it to your update field. So you see what I'm talking about here? Let me go to the Home tab. Let's see. This is Phil. What heading is he? He's heading 2. Because he's heading 2, and I can click on my Browse by Heading button. In fact, if I let's do Control Home, and I can click on the Browse by button. As we learned in, in the caption training video, I can say I want to browse by heading. Automatically takes me to the first heading. And then I can go ahead and click Next if there's any more headings, but there isn't. In any case, let's, let's reference that heading here. And that heading is, this is Phil, this is what Phil's about. So if it's an article that nobody wants to read what Phil's about, I can just go ahead and say, and I can reference that. Let me right click it and capitalize his name. And I can reference that and say, insert, cross reference. And I want to be able to do by heading, and this is the only heading within there, this is Phil. And say, I, I want to go with page number and click insert, and click OK. So this is Phil. Let's do page three. And then we'll close it. Now the whole point being again is that if you need to update, if there's any changes within your document, you can dynamically update everything by doing control A and hitting F9. One last little tip I'll give you is that you can always make all cross references shaded all the time. You know where it's not shaded here, you can't tell if that's a cross reference. Well you can do that by coming up and clicking on the office logo button, going down to word options come over here and click in the advanced category and then scroll down here to the show document content and then come down here where it says field shading you can click on the drop down arrow and say always and then click OK and anybody else when you send this to them um, what exactly is a cross reference what you're referencing to now I have a spooky question is that going to print out on the document if I print the shading well when in doubt always do a print preview you can either add one up on your quick access toolbar by right clicking and customizing it or just click on the office logo button come down to print and go to your print preview and you can click on it to zoom in you see any shading around that cross reference I don't so hey it's not going to print what you see here is what you're going to get go ahead and close out of the print preview thanks for watching 
Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.